It's Solo D, Mr. Miami Dolphin music. Dolphins fans to the Copper Slam. We're gonna give you more insight into this Miami Dolphin music. How we got started? Why is I'm a Dolphins fan into the Copper Slam? It's not about music, it's about the team. We die for these colors. I go on. I've been a Dolphins fan since a child. Growing up in Miami, I'm a home team representative, so I'm my home team, everything in Miami, but Dolphins is just so serious for me. And to know, like, you get tested so much as a Dolphins fan because in my lifetime, we haven't been that good a team. We had Dan Marino, we had good seasons, but we got let down toward the end of the season. I haven't seen us in the Super Bowl in my lifetime. So, you know, it takes a lot of loyalty. That's where those loyalty ideas and t-shirts come from. No, but after games, you know, when you get in the game and you play hard the whole game and then you end up losing from a fumble in the fourth quarter or a field goal went to the left and you lose the game, that's frustrating. So you get mad, but you never think about changing teams. Like, I just, that's not even in my system. In Miami, this is my whole childhood in Miami. I've been in and out of Miami because we always moved around Miami. I mean, out of Miami, I lived in a lot of different places, and I never changed repping my team ever. And I think that made it even harder because it's like you're never around your kind of fans. If I'm in Atlanta, you're around a bunch of Falcons fans. If I'm in D.C., you're around a bunch of Redskins fans. Anywhere I go, you're always around those fans. And a lot of times that'll rub off, even especially if the team's doing better than what you're doing. But, you know, I never, I never thought about changing my team. Like, and actually, when I started Miami Dolphin Music, I was living in D.C. So, I think being away from Miami kind of makes me rep even harder for Miami and our Miami teams. You know how this music started? I didn't even, it wasn't organized like, oh, let me go make songs that they're going to play in the stadiums and we end up performing. I didn't play in any of that. I, actually, it was 2010. And it was a year, we were already two weeks into the season, we started out 2-0. We were about to play the Jets, Monday night football, and we had the Patriots in the And the Jets, anybody who knows the Dodgers, that's one of the biggest rivalries in football. So that's the most hated team, that's our biggest rival. So I just made a song just to talk bad about the Jets, period. That's all I did. And it so happened, I made that song, put it on YouTube, got a bunch of thousands of views, a lot of comments. And then because, and this is it's crazy how it's set up, because the next week we play the Patriots. And the Patriots, that's our second biggest rival. That's not bigger than the Jets, so that's our second biggest rival. Those two games running back to back made me make two weeks worth of music, because it was just the same thing when we did both of these teams and big, and you know, up my team. I'm a big sports fan first. I played football my whole life. I'm big into sports, sports and music. So for me, tying them in together, that was First Nation, so it's just amazing how it came together. But it just started off by me making a song to talk bad about the Jets and then the Patriots. And then the third week, it was like, people asking me online, you gonna do this every week? And I was like, yeah, you know what? I wanna do it every week. This is fun. So it was fun first. It's not even like business to me. It's fun. Like, it's easy. Because I'm just talking trash. That's what football fans do. We talk trash. <laughs> you know, that's it. Fans, you go online, you go anywhere, you go to any sports bar, uh, foot, that's what football is for, basketball, every other sport is kind of polite, you know, here and now my team is better. Football, that's what we do, we talk trash, period. We talk trash about, it's the season in long enough not to talk trash, every game counts, so it's a real competitive sport, people take it very serious, you only got 16 games a year if you don't go to the playoffs, so it's just, it's, it's a lot more serious, so all I'm doing, just talking trash, friendly, you know, nothing, nothing too crazy. I don't curse in any of the music, but you know, I'm saying, I'm speaking, I'm a voice for the Dolphins fans. Like, I'm saying what we feel. The frustrations, I make songs when we lose. I had to start 2011, we started that season off 0 and 7. I still had to make a song every week. So, it's not just when we're doing good at all. It's like, I'm honest in my music. Home. If we're doing bad, I say we're doing bad, but I always bring it to, we represent our team, no matter what. Actually, what's crazy is, like I said, the first two weeks, 
after the second song, I probably would have left it alone, but people were asking on YouTube, people leaving comments, uh, are you gonna start doing this every week? Are you gonna start doing this? People start adding me on Facebook and all that kind of stuff, telling me they like those two songs. And then that next week we played the Packers. We lost both of those games. So that's, that was kind of bad on my record. The first two songs I made, we lost the game. So they could have been real superstitious and said, oh man, since he started making these songs, we lost these two games, but that didn't happen. So I kept it going, cause that's the spirit you gotta have anyway. Like you gotta have a spirit of not quitting. So basically I started getting all kind of comments. Oh man, we like this. Older people, young people, people all races, people from different countries telling me, oh man, you gotta do this. Like, you're giving me hype every week for the game when we lose, you're making me feel better about us losing. People saying, I don't like rap music, but I love your music. All kind of different stuff like that. So that motivated me to want to keep going. And then from there, people writing, oh, they need you at the stadium, they should play this at the stadium. And that actually eventually ended up happening. About a fourth week, we played the Steelers. And at that time, Somebody, a representative from the Miami Dolphins actually wrote me on YouTube and said, you know, can we play this song at the stadium? But, you know, that was an amazing opportunity. So I definitely took that from that. And then people would write me again, oh, we heard your music at the stadium. It's exciting to see this. We're going up. The views just kept going up. I was getting thousands of views every week. So that's what let me know I need to keep going. Even though we're not, to know I actually had people waiting on it and depending on it and expressing the kind of emotions they expressed. People telling me, I was just a lot of emotions in the comments, you know, so I was like, well, this is kind of serious. It's deeper than just making music. I didn't want to let people down. I didn't want to let myself in. Players, I started getting messages from players. Players started writing me on Twitter. Oh, man, yeah, we, we messed with that. We playing it in the locker room. You know, they were playing in the locker room. They were playing it pregame in the warm-ups and everything. They were looking forward to it. Uh, you know, like Vontae Davis was like, man, you better mention me in the next song. You know, telling me stuff like that. So, yeah, it, it got fun. I'm gonna tell you what. What makes my music different from average football music I hear? I'm not a go team, go hands in the air, waving hands for the Miami Dolphins type of person. The reason I like my music and I feel like it's completely all right is because it's all coming from my heart. It's all real. It's not just waving hands. Everything is all good. I talk about bad stuff and we mess up on plays. I talk about anything that happened in that past week or anything that happened in that season. It's all real, it's all authentic. Like, it's coming from my heart. It's not just to make people move or make a crowd move. We make it fun, we have a good time with it, but end of the day, anybody knows when you listen to my songs, I'm gonna say it real. Like, if something bad, if it was a bad play, I'm gonna mention the play. Bad game, I mention the bad game. Whatever the case is, it's authentic. Like, I'm talking, it, it's fresh. And it has to be fresh because it comes every week. I don't make a song until after the game is over. I'm gonna start coming with the concept until after I watch the full game, assess the game, look at other games around the league, and then, you know, make up, you know, just have fun with it. The music is fun to me, it's first nature, so. I have heard other people's football music, and no disrespect to them, but that's cool for just, you know, like, wave your hands and the air type stuff. I don't make that. Like, anybody who listens and understands hip hop and rap, they know I destroy these tracks lyrically. Like, it's not even just on like a, a play level, a fun level. Like if you actually understand lyrics and hip hop, I destroy these tracks. I think that's what separates my music from other people's music. And it's consistent. I don't know too many other people that. So I think that's what separates. It's just, it's, people actually can relate to it. It's not all good. If some bad going on, I'm talking about what's bad. Yeah, so, you know, they had a Dolphins DC club. They showed me love, they come. Oh yeah, Solo, we want you to come through. Yeah, like, it's, it's amazing to me, because the crazy thing is, before Facebook and Twitter and all that, I thought it was only me and my immediate circle that were, like, really Dolphins fans. We thought we were the biggest, like, you know, we go crazy when we lose. We, it's all we talk about, it's all we think about, it's the Dolphins. But because of social media, it's amazing to see how many fans it is around this world. I love that. Like, it's, I feel like it's a family in itself. Now I've done travel, I've been in New York, DC, Virginia, all these different places with, like, with the team and it's, it's just crazy. I mean, we have fans overseas, I got fans in, in Belgium, Germany, Africa, all kinds of people wearing Dolphin stuff, man. We love to hear your music, people in the military. So it's just crazy how much unity has come from me making this music and how, how, how much 
Like, I feel like it's a whole nother family. Now it's crazy. I go home, I go to the stadium. I feel like I'm around family. It's like fraternity or something like that. So that's amazing to me. That's something I'm glad I've been exposed to. People all over California, Texas, every state. I think I have like somebody from every state on my, you know, on my Facebook or something like that, or Twitter. Tell me they love the music, they die hard Dolphins fans, been Dolphins fans all their life. So I love that experience in itself and I love to travel and go to different places and see.